In the name of God, amen. In his book, Love is Holding On to Hope, uh, Love is the Way, his most recent book, our, our presiding bishop has a chapter that you just have to read for the title alone. It's um, what Dolly Parton and Desmond Tutu have in common. And the short answer is um, they, their dreams. Uh, Dolly Parton speaks of the dreams that helped her rise out of crushing poverty in Appalachia. Desmond Tutu spent his entire adult life holding on to the dream that one day his nation would be free from the evil of apartheid. But lest you think the chapter then falls into um, kind of platitudes about dreams, Bishop Curry pivots to events in his own life, and particularly the years 1967-68. He was a teenager. 67 was the year his mother died. 68 was the year his two heroes died, Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy. Um, and he said what kind of held him together in those years was the example of his father and of the black church um, and this sense that you just keep going in the face of struggle, you don't give up. And most importantly, that Jesus wasn't somewhere off in the sky. Jesus was right there in the struggle with them. And he, he includes in this chapter, and basically an exhortation, if you're going to live by dreams, uh, be prepared to go deep and to live deep and to face the despair of disappointment when you bump up against the crucible steel of life. But when you do, he said, trust the hope that will see you through. And then he includes, as he often does, the, um, the Ten Commandments of Nonviolence. That was the um, essential practice and teaching for those who were involved with King in those early years of the Civil Rights Movement. So here, are they, here they are, here are the first nine. Meditate daily on the teachings of Jesus. Remember always that the nonviolent movement seeks justice and reconciliation, not victory. Walk and talk in the manner of love, for God is love. Pray daily to be used by God in order that all might be free. Sacrifice personal wishes in order that all might be free. Observe with both friend and foe the ordinary rules of courtesy. Seek to perform regular service for others and for the world. Refrain from the violence of fist, tongue, or heart. Strive to be in good spiritual and bodily health. Because we're in this for the long haul. And if we're going to live and walk in the love of Jesus, we need to have we need to have clarity about what that means. Gather today in prayer for healing, for unity, and for hope. This I know about the healing process, and I know this from personal experience. If there's a really deep wound on your body, the wound is deep, and a scab or a thin layer of skin forms on the surface, it can actually look as if healing is taking place. But if the connective tissue is not undergoing its own healing process underneath, um, what happens is that part of the wound festers, often gets infected. And um, though the wound is hidden from view for a time, it's not healing at all. So as we pray for healing in our nation, we do well to remember that there's little to be gained and in fact much harm to be done if we tend too quickly to the surface of things while ignoring the wounds underneath. May we pray for deep 
healing. This is what I know about unity, that it often comes at the expense of those whose inclusion is too costly for the dominant group. That's as true on the playground as it is in a wider society. And then that exclusion is often forgotten by those who have settled for what the prophet Isaiah called peace when there is no peace. We don't have to look far for examples from this in our history. After the Civil War and the political whiplash of a white supremacist president taking power after the assassination of President Lincoln, followed then by a president in fact committed to reconstruction of the South and, and true liberty for for now freed slaves, followed then by a series of leaders in the South committed to dismantling all the gains blacks had made, and Northerners more than happy to look the other way. There was this constant drumbeat for national unity between North and South. Monuments all over the country, windows in this cathedral erected in that time in the, in the service of unity between white Americans and those granted into whiteness in those years. And we know who was excluded from that unity, from the ideals of democracy and liberty and justice for all. And some of the most shameful periods of our history, many of which were suppressed from our collective memory, come from that time and from the impulse for unity along racial lines. So as we pray for unity, may we remember that, um, that the kind of unity represented in the kingdom of God and in the mosaic of this nation is not one that will come by exclusion, but with the hard work hard work of reconciling. This I know about hope, that it can and does rise from places of deepest despair. It's the most astonishing thing. And it can and does stir in our hearts even when we think we have reason to give up. Um, I wish I knew how this happened. I, I just know that it does. And this isn't hope that's born of platitudes or wishful thinking. What I love about this kind of hope is that it allows for grief and all of its manifestations. This hope never chastises us for being exhausted and worried. It doesn't ask us to pretend that things are going to be okay when we actually don't know if that's true. At least in the short term, we don't know if that's true. But what hope does Thank God for hope. What hope does is help us rise again, not from our strength, but from the strength that comes to us from the deepest wells of the human spirit where God's divine spirit meets us. It's the most amazing thing. Now, there's a cost to this hope, and we do have to choose it because it refuses to deny the reality of suffering. In fact, you remember that litany from St. Paul, some of you may, that he's actually saying, look, we need suffering because suffering is what produces endurance and endurance is what produces character and character is what produces hope. And this hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us, right? That's the source of it, the love that amazing love of God. So as, as Dean Holler said, we are in this time of waiting, waiting for the results of the election to be um, revealed. Um, and because we believe not only in our theological foundation bedrock that every person is a child of God, 
We also believe that every citizen has a right to cast a vote, and those votes need to be counted. So we wait. It's actually not helpful. It's a bit embarrassing and, frankly, outrageous for the president to cast doubt on normal practices of democracy and the heroic efforts during a pandemic to exercise the right to vote. So we will wait and we will see the results and we will take it from there, whatever the outcome. Whatever the outcome, the practices, the discipline, the call to love is the same, and the work continues. So we pray for peace, deep peace. We pray for unity that is real and excludes no one. And we set our sights on hope. I love that passage about letting your light shine, but I, I wish it said, biblical redaction here, I wish it said, let Jesus' light shine, you know, let, let, let his light shine, because I can do that today. I'm letting his light shine through, through and through, and I'm letting him be the salt that leavens us, and uh, I am trusting that God will prevail in all things. And in the meantime, and I'm bringing this to a close here, but in the meantime, I want to tell you one more story. Last night, I went down to Black Lives Matter Plaza. It's about five o'clock at night, and there were all these young people there, all different, all different types of young people. Some were playing drums, some were singing, some were raising signs, um, some were chanting, lots of drums pretty chaotic, actually. The police were very respectful, keeping the boundaries on the side. And then there was this just wall of press watching, just cameras ready. And that went on for, for quite some time and milled around for a bit. And then I met these people, part of the nonviolent peace force were there. The Nonviolent Peace Force is this international body of people that place themselves in volatile situations to be an instrument of peace. And there's a DC Peace Force, and they were there in full force last night, praying and walking and offering themselves. And I spoke to the leader, and he said, yeah, all of us are people of faith, um, but it would be really great to have you join us. So, friends, may we meditate today on the teachings and life of Jesus. May we remember always that the nonviolent movement seeks justice and reconciliation, not victory. May we walk and talk in the manner of love, for God is love. Pray daily to be used by God in order that all might be free sacrifice our personal wishes in order that all might be free, observe with both friend and foe the ordinary rules of courtesy, seek to perform regular service for others and for the world, refrain from the violence of fist or tongue or heart, and strive to be in good spiritual and bodily health. We do those things, then we know the light of Jesus will shine through us. May it be so. Amen.